Hey there folks, Rinium T here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. In the last part, we went through and uh, got through the second goal of Bahamut. There was a few issues on turn 9, but we got there. We got there. Luckily, the final coil will be a lot easier. It Well, I say that, but be less painful than that. It's still pretty hard. Anyways, let's speak with Minfilia and get on with the 2.3 storyline, The Great Divide. Our friends, the very isle itself, everyone and everything. No, no, it avails us not to speculate. Ariane J will send word if there are any developments. Until such time as he does, we must remain firmly focused on that which is within our power to change. With that in mind, I would speak of a different matter, one closer to home. It concerns etheric fluctuations which we have previously attributed to the good king Maga Mog the Twelve. That the king is no more is a blessing for which we have you to thank. Yet all is not well in the Twelve's wood. Our latest readings reveal an ongoing etheric disturbance of considerable magnitude. They may even suggest the presence of a primal. Needless to say, the mere possibility warrants immediate investigation. I have you. Celia, I do not wish to interrupt, but we have a problem. What men are a problem? A band of refugees, hailing from Old Dawa this time, have come, are come the revenants full seeking asylum. It would seem they expect us to afford them the same treatment we gave the Domans. At present, they are in the seventh heaven, awaiting a formal response. I see. Mayhap this is to, this was to be expected. I shall meet with them at once. Asilia, you know full well we haven't the resources to accommodate many more people. Consider what will happen if you do this. Word will spread, more will follow. Your opinion is duly noted, but I will hear their suit. Arya, you should be grateful for your presence at this meeting. Oh, I should be grateful, not you should be grateful. I should be grateful. So, back outside to speak with these refugees. Um, turn around. There you are. I apologize for keeping you waiting. My name is Benfilia. I lead the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Twelve be praised. It is you. We're ready and willing to work, same as the Delmans. Just give us a task and we'll see it done. Pray calm yourselves. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I know not of your situation. I beg your pardon, to see that I, I, I ain't so good with words. We've been living off this grass at Wilda for years now, trying to piece together a life to replace that one that what got took. They say there's work, but there's not for an honest man. Not as wouldn't sully his sooner... Not as when it's like his soul sooner than his palms, and he wrote, The flames do what they can for us, of course. It ain't near enough. It's only getting worse. When the calamity brought us to our knees, those rich bastards in the city didn't help us up. They climbed on our backs. I don't pretend to be clever, but you know I can see what's coming. I know, knew we had to run. The only question was where, and they came to me. Revenants toll. I mean, you talked to foreigners in, didn't you? So you'd surely do the same for us. I fear the situation is rather more complicated. Well, it's true that we accepted the government's petition for aid. That decision was a product of ex extraordinary circumstances. I sympathize deeply, deeply with your plight, but pray understand that it is not possible for an organization of our means to aid all who have been affected by the calamity. So it is with great regret that I must deny your request. But, but we've got nowhere else to go. You're turning your back on us? Yeah, I thought I have a word. Tataru is on a miss. Ill tidings in Old my lady. Alphano has, Alphano has been wounded. What? How? Is it serious? Cannot say for certain, but I fear it might be. According to the flames, the refugees started the riot. They went wild, apparently lashing out at any and every one. It can't be right. Why would they? They must have been provoked. The demonstration was meant to be peaceful. 
Seven hells. Now the blades will have an excuse. They'll round us up and kill anyone who tries to resist. And to see him, please. If he won't help us build a new life, at least help us keep the ones we've got. My lady. We are not ones to stand idly by and watch innocents suffer. However, until we know more of the circumstances surrounding this riot, I'm not certain what aid, if any, we can provide. The authorities determine the refugees attack without provocation, then those responsible will have to answer for their actions. How can you be so blind? Find out and know quickly. If he is in danger or worse, I'd have you and none other by his side. Thank you. Pray do not concern yourself with the matter we were discussing earlier. Eva and Papalima will see to it. Athena is being treated at the hourglass. Hurry, Arya! Alright, so I have to look for Alphano back in Ulda. Come, you must have gathered by now that Tataru is given to exaggeration. As you can see, I am quite well. Ulda, on the other hand, is not. This riot was anything but an isolated incident. There is a restlessness in the air. Tensions long simmering are at last threatening to boil over. Ulda is a nation infamous for the great disparity between the wealthy and the poor. The majority of the populace accepts this state of affairs because they believe that every man bears responsibility for his own lot in life. To an Uldan, money is the foremost, and some would say the only measure of a man's worth. Small wonder that the wealthiest wield the greatest influence. So where do the refugees fit into this social hierarchy? What place is there for those who fled Alamigo and the destruction of the Calamity? Plainly, there is none. They have no wealth, no power, and no worth. To the Uldan way of thinking, they may as well not exist. Choosing to ignore their existence, however, is patently not an option. General Rauban and the Sultana understand this, which is why they ordered the Immortal Flames to provide the refugees aid and succor. Yet none would dispute that the expenses incurred by this policy grow by the day, with no end in sight. This has prompted more and more Uldans to question their obligation to aid these worthless wanderers while more and more refugees have come to resent their treatment at the hands of the sneering citizenry. The manner of Lord Lolorito's refusal to grant the Dolmen's asylum bespoke a disdain for all refugees, an attitude shared by the rest of the monetarists. And you may be sure they make no effort to conceal their opinions. It was only a matter of time before the refugees united in protest. Nor is it any surprise that some among them would ultimately resort to violence. <sighs> that the immortal flames should choose this of all occasions to engage in joint training exercises with the other grand companies. By the time they return, the situation may well have deteriorated beyond mending. inevitable that an incident of this kind would eventually let me try that again as i told you before it's all but inevitable that an incident of this kind would eventually occur given the rising tensions within the sultanate nevertheless i have reason to believe that this particular riot may not have begun spontaneously have i piqued your curiosity good do you accompany me to the hall of flames i would hear what general Rabon has to say about upon the matter 
All right. Let's us head for the Hall of Flames. I was about to go to the Chamber of Rule, and that's not the Hall of Flames. Oops. Well, I can still take this way. Let's go. It's great. Now is not a good time, Lieutenant Ar Ariana. My hands are full to deal with refugees. Precisely the matter we wish to discuss, General. Off and though, back on your feet already. <laughs> you may credit my swift recovery to your Cherugians. My memories of the riot are still somewhat muddled. Trust you managed to regain control of the situation. Not entirely. We secured the city soon enough, but not before the unrest had spread through to the surrounding territories. Pockets of resistance remain throughout Thanalan. We have sent what forces we can spare to root out the problem of the belligerents, but progress is slow. They are damnably elusive. I can well imagine. Given the majority of refugees live outside the walls, it stands a reason that they would know the land lay of the land. What I do not understand is how they came to be so well prepared. Before my little accident, I observed that several of the refugees were armed. Not with butcher knives or pitchforks, but with martial weaponry. I har need hardly add that such equipment is costly. None can deny that tensions between Old Don's citizenry and the refugee population have increased since the domains were turned away. But what would that motivate a starving man to purchase arms in lieu of food? I think not. And one of those who have not even a single gill to spend, who could not survive without the aid provided by the immortal flames, surely they would sooner sell a weapon than bring it to bear against their benefactors. Come to the point. I agree. Very well, my point, General, is that this powder keg of discontent was not set alight by chance. These events were deliberately set in motion, and... And now order must be restored. That is my first duty. Until it is done, any investigation can wait. Do not have time to discuss this. My scouts will be returning or not. <sighs> the General is no fool. He keeps his own counsel, and with good cause. Were he to claim, without the necessary proof that these riots were instigated by outside forces, the monetarists would accuse him of attempting to shirk responsibility. After all, he and the Sultana have been the most outspoken proponents of refugee aid. Regardless, they will face harsh criticism in the days ahead. Our allies may stumble upon the truth in time, but have far more faith in your abilities, Arya. Therefore, I propose we conduct our own investigation independent of the authorities. To that end, I would have you making inquiries in the settlement suspected of harboring belligerents. Commander Swift will know which they are. He may block it, such at a request for such information, but I have no doubt you can persuade him with your silver tongue. I, meanwhile, shall seek answers in my own way, after which we can regroup and share our findings. Well then, shall we? Oh hey, there's a primal afoot, but hey, we can do all this, right? Look as though you have something to say, Lieutenant Ariana, do you? Will you ask no simple favor? Were such information to fall into the wrong hands of the lives of countless soldiers would be a risk, even so, there's wisdom in your words. An able individual, even momentized to the flames, may be suited, better suited to this task than the regiment. Farewell. The brass blades have reported suspicious activity in the vicinity of Lost Hope. It may be unrelated to recent events, but we doubt it. I suggest you begin speaking to the blades posted there. Alright. That means heading up to Blackbrush Station. Hey, Leo Frick. Hello again. I didn't expect to send you, Arya. Take it this means someone has read my report. The refugees who left with the merchant have yet to return. I'm increasingly concerned that Zazawaka's suspicions were correct. You haven't the foggiest what I'm talking about, do you? Never mind. Speak with Zazawaka. He will explain everything. And what brings you here, adventurous? Search for refugees? Well, then you've come to the right place. Ah, you mean those refugees? No, no, you won't find them here. Most of the people of Lost Hope have come to accept their situation. They're content to pass their days in peace and quiet. Outsiders have trouble understanding that. Like the merchant who passed through recently, gregarious fellow, awfully opinionated. Can't say I was sad to see him go. Alright, so we need to speak with Zazawaka. I'm not one of them. Wait, I know your face. Are you not the woman from the Church of St. Adama Landama? A thousand pardons, my friend. I mistook you for one of the thugs who have been tormenting us. If Leo Freak bid you speak with me, then I take it you agreed to help. Follow be praised for that, because we haven't a moment to waste. 
Everyone knows the flames are on the march. The others have fallen under that fanatic spell, but not I. Promises of revolution and retribution of holding the ruling class to account and taking that which is owed. Huh, a childish fantasy. I did everything I could to dissuade the others from leaving, but few would heed my words. Oh, excuse me, what the heck? Now that one of our idealists has returned, however, the madness of the merchant's plan is playing for all to see. Look behind yonder tent and you will understand why. Even now, he babbles incoherently, so traumatized is he by the bloodshed he witnessed. Try as I might, I can make little sense of his words beyond the fact that he was not alone in surviving. Yet I have no doubt that merchant will lead the remainder to their doom. I beg of you, find them before he does. Alright, let's speak with this terrified refugee. What are you doing? Don't, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw, don't draw! Wait, didn't you run away with... Why didn't you run away with me? Could we escape together? Then you'd be here with me. Be here to soothe me. Oh, why didn't you understand? Leave me alone. <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? I, it's true. Father the merchant and may the gods strike me down for my folly. What they will... What they will not give you must take, he said. When he asked how he revealed the cache of weapons he had brought and employers to seize control over our fates, I thought about running then and there, but the others were so excited, he split us into two groups and sent us off on their own. When the flames found us, we didn't know what to do. Our leader tried to parley with theirs, but they started arguing, and then the fighting, and then everybody, and then the flames were shouting to give no quarter, and oh god, the other group, there's no out there. If we don't stop them, they'll be massacred like mine was. Shock and awe. The other refugees are hiding in the cave south of Lost Hope, but to approach them would be fruitless. They would sooner call us agents of the Sultanate and try to kill us and listen to reason why the twins might even deign to do the deed themselves. Pox and the bloody soul swords. They were supposed to train us to fight, but the ones he sent with us vanished during the struggle. If only we had never listened to that virgin's ridiculous claims, he said our cause was righteous, that the gods would never suffer us to be defeated. Oh, if they were forced to confront reality. That's it. Challenge the twins in combat and show my brethren that the that their strongest warriors are no match for one woman. Mayhap then they will agree to lay down their arms and renounce this plot. Sounds like I need to pull out Dragana. Maybe, if I can actually get my mouth here. Okay, if my button decides to agree with me. So I believe this key we're looking for is. I want to say is either this one or up above. But I feel like it'd tell me. Yeah, it's down here. Seven hells, they found it. Everyone grab your gear and make for the rendezvous point. So that's your game, is it? <laughs> Sorry at this point you laugh, but we're more than willing to kill you ourselves. Yeah, well about that. Ooh, we can take her! Are you sure? Really sure about that? I'm not so sure about that. Oh, there's three this time. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh wait, no, I'm not. No, no, no. This must be the twin. Turns out still not scared though. Really not scared. You beat him like it was nothing, though, mighty. What are we gonna do now? All right, let's get back to that terrified refugee, which means I have to go back to that voice, don't I? Oh no. You, we were trying. Do you find my brethren? What are the twins? What happened? I, I see. Well, well, you had no choice. Rather than a handful of them take a beating from you, then the lot get butchered by the flames. Tell me, what did the merchant have to say when it was over? Huh? But where else would he be? Unless, unless he wanted the stones to throw the recruit others. 
Oh no! Um, read the one. Yeah. Read the whirlwind. The merchant wished to approach the refugees in Stone's Throw, but was wa was waiting until the flames withdrew their forces from the vicinity. Now that they have, there's nothing to stop him from continuing their his work. How many more will perish in the pursuit of this futile cause? How much more suffering must we endure before it ends? Find him. Convinced of the season's mad quest. It will surely lead us to ruin. Alright. Stowe's throw is all the way down there. No oh, good. Good thing there's flying! Otherwise I just go to the and walk out. <laughs> but, hey, I can fly. You see my parents? They told me to stay here with the others. They, they said they'd be back soon, but it's been days. They left me with the man from Old Dawn. The man said they were gonna change everything, make it so we could live inside the walls with everyone else. I liked it when he said that. I didn't like it when you talk about making the rich people pay. Everyone looks so angry and I got scared. Seamus, are, are you looking for someone? Looking for a merchant. Y you mean the man who left with my parents, but I, I don't know where he... Wait, look! Over there! I think that's him! Well now, which of these global fools shall be my next victim? Y y you I, I, I... He's getting away! Go get him, miss! Alright, let's go get him. He's way over this way. Good thing we can fly. Come on. Too high. There he is. You again? Why are you pursuing me? Sedition, treason, revolution? Th that's preposterous. Uh, who is with your head with these lies? Refugees? The self same refugees who terrorized the streets of Lulda? Ha! Huh. You have no evidence to prove your accusations. None! N no, I will not complain you the Hall of Flames. You have no right to detain me. For the sake of argument, let, let us say I, I did do the things you claim. Sure, surely you, you don't think I'd give a current arse about politics. It was only business. Only business. We both know I'm not the one you want. However, if you agree to protect me, I shall tell you- I swear, I shall tell you everything. What's all this commotion? Seven hells. Tell the iris to spread out and search the area. The killer may still be close. Oh boy. Hold adventure. I would know more about your relationship with the victim as well as the events leading up to his death. I was just trying to t uh, detain him. 
Man's responsible for the recent riots? Mayhap he, we owe his murderer a debt of gratitude. In any case, it's a, obvious you are not the one wh whom we seek. You may carry on with your investigation, Scion. Ah, back to the Hall of Flames, it seems. One news, Lieutenant Ariana, where is the merchant? Murdered? Damn it all to the seventh hell! He was not simply murdered, Lieutenant. He was silent. Too many knew his face, and he was ready to divulge his secrets. Do not despair, though. We may be closer to identif identifying the true orchestrator of these riots than you realize. Okay. Revolution. The Flame General left word that you were to proceed to the fragrant chamber as soon as you return. He wishes to discuss your recent discoveries as well as the results of our own investigation. Master Alphano has already been informed and should be waiting for you outside. Pray proceed to the Royal Promenade with all haste and speak with the Bartholomew. So... Is actually where I was trying to go when I was like, yeah, let's go to the Hall of Flames. Yeah, this is where I actually need to go. I've been expecting you, madam. Please proceed inside. This is almost definitely voiced. Right? Commander Swift has kept us apprised of yeah. your recent activities. You've made great strides towards quelling the violence. Despite our best efforts to determine what provoked this uprising, the truth continues to elude us. Have you uncovered aught which might shed some light on the mystery? This information does not leave this room. Sorry folks, doesn't leave the room. The Syndicate's decision to reject the Doman refugees' appeal for asylum had lasting repercussions. A number of those displaced by the Calamity claimed it was proof of a policy of discrimination. Together with a group of Alamegan refugees, they organized a series of demonstrations to protest against the Sultanate. Demonstrations which became heated, but did not descend into violence. Until a certain incident served as a call to arms. A unit of brass blades sent to supervise a demonstration loosed arrows upon unarmed protesters. It was this atrocity which prompted the refugees to take up arms. I need not tell you what followed. We assumed at first that the attack was born of a miscommunication. When emotions run high, they happen. But suspicions were raised regarding the unit's commanding officer, whom I ordered interrogated. Sure enough, our fears were soon confirmed. The dog confessed that a merchant had offered him coin to give the order. A merchant in the employ of Taleji Adeleji. Taleji Adeleji? But he spoke in favor of the Doman's cause, and has ever seemed sympathetic towards the refugee's plight. Why would he do such a thing? Know you of the Cartano Reclamation Bill? It is a proposal to annex the Cartano Flats so that refugees may establish permanent settlements. When last I looked, that was disputed territory. Aye. Some might even call it a battlefield. The destruction wrought by Bahamut was greatest at the Cartano Flats. That much is common knowledge. What is less well known is that his rampage laid bare ancient Alagon ruins, of which no record existed. There are certain differences of opinion as to how these ruins should be handled, which is why each nation maintains a military presence in the region to this day. Yet differ though we may, we are still allies. 
Therefore, in the interest of preserving the Aeorzean Alliance, we have reached an agreement. Any conflict which may arise during the course of military exercises in the region shall have no bearing on relations between our nations. In full knowledge of this delicate state of affairs, Telegi Adelegi proposed the Cartano Reclamation Bill. A shameless bloody ruse which stands to benefit him in but one conceivable way. If successful, he will gain control over the disputed territory under the guise of assisting in the resettlement effort. And you can be sure he'll build an orphanage next to every Alagon ruin. The man would threaten the unity of the Aeorzean Alliance and risk countless lives for personal gain. He walks a path all his own. Independent of any faction, and beholden to none of his fellows on the Syndicate. By inciting the less fortunate to violence, he hopes to convince others that the Cartano Reclamation Bill is the only viable solution. His sympathy for the plight of the Domans was not but posturing to gain credibility with the refugees. Of that there can be no doubt. Forgive me, but what could possibly motivate Telegi Adelegi to go to such lengths? What is so special about these ruins that he would risk his position on the Syndicate, and, most likely, charges of treason against the Sultanate? Omega. Pardon? An Oligon monstrosity, not unlike the Ultima weapon. Mayhap larger, we know not. It has yet to be fully excavated. Oligon inscriptions indicate that it was created to fell Bahamut himself. If accurate, it might explain why Nail Van Darnus chose to bring the Red Moon down upon the Cartano Flats. Given the ends he went to to ensure Eorzea's annihilation, Destroying the one weapon which could stay the Elder Primal may well have seemed like good sense. When first I bore witness to the power of the Ultima weapon, I doubted the evidence of my senses. And now you tell me there is another such weapon. One which could contend with Bahamut. Bahamut! Aye, we were skeptical ourselves. Truth be told, until the Ultima Weapon's existence came to light, we thought the inscription had been mistranslated. At present, Omega is more akin to a fossil than a tool of war, having long since ceased to function. As such, its true potential cannot accurately be gauged. However, if someone were to restore it, as the Carleans did the Ultima Weapon, I have little doubt that he would wield untold power. Power enough to subjugate Uldar like as not, and the rest of Eorzea besides, which is doubtless why Telegi Adelegi yearns to have it. That he should aspire to world domination. He who has ever walked two paces behind Lord Lolorito in matters of commerce. Tis in acknowledgement of his own limitations that he seeks this power. Woe betide us all, should we allow him to have it. Pray waste no time chasing rats. Only a fool would believe that secrets can be kept in Ulda. It would seem the implications of the Sultanate's refugee problem are rather more far-reaching than we assumed. We're at the cutscene. Just, just kinda like that. 
Beg your pardon, Cyan. The, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, let's pick with Alpha now. Stories we tell. This is probably not voice, though. I should be glad to know the truth, and yet the thought that all this chaos was a product of one man's lust for power sickens me. How long do you think they intend to hide the existence of Omega from the Scions? Or intended, not intend. That they even felt the need to do so is most troubling. It would be in our best interest to learn more of the military activities in the disputed territories. Fortunately, you are well positioned to do so, Lieutenant Ariana. Pray keep us informed of any developments in Cardinal. Be gone, Well, This is no place for children. through as well, I see. Did, did you find the man? Were my parents with him? They were not, I'm afraid. However, I can think of several places they might be. If you like, we can go look for them together. Really? You'll help me look, mister? Of course, but first, I must need to finish speaking with my friend. Just telling me a secret, you see, so no one is allowed to listen. May I go away from me by that pillar over there? We require by the moment. Okay, mister, I'll be waiting. <sighs> Take her to the quicksand. Mayhap Mamodi will know what to do. <sighs> A legion of garlands and Aether Star of Primal. Even dealing with an Asian would be preferable to this charade. Sometimes I fear Minfilia is too ambitious. We rush hither and yon in response to threats as they arise without concern for the strain it places on our limited resources and ourselves. Mayhap the time has come for a change. All right, this is Minfilia. I know this is sudden, but I must ask you to return to Revenant's Toll with all due haste. The situation in Toll's has taken a turn for the worse. I will explain in detail once you arrive. Yeah, you know that primal they mentioned? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's probably about that. It's Wellswood, and the primal threat she spoke of before has been confirmed. We received no reports of Ixali activity, which leaves the Sylphs? Go, Arya. You know as well as I that the appearance of a primal takes precedence over all else. Oh, and when you arrive to inform the antecedent that while I am grateful for her concern, she needn't fear for my safety, I am more than capable of protecting myself. Um. What? Oh, okay. I'm like, where the heck am I? <laughs> the heck? Okay. Back to Minfilia. It's a relief to see you healthy and hail, Arya. The latest news from Hilda was most disturbing. Clearly, the only injury Alphanel suffered was to his ego. Doubtless, it will heal ere long. The other sounds will need to be present for this meeting. If you are ready to begin, I will summon them now. Oh boy. Lord of Levin. Thank you for, for responding to my call with such haste. We're so sure that I should not have summoned you at were it bleh. Let me try that again. <laughs> Rest assured, I should not have summoned you were it not urgent. To business, then. I have received some most disturbing news from the Order of the Twin Adder. They have reason to believe that the Sylphs have, may have called forth their revered guardian, the Primal Ramu. I'm sorry, may have? Then it is not certain. 
The other seed seer informs us that the elementals themselves murmur of the Lord of Leaven's return to the forest. The Southlands, however, display no signs of undue commotion. Forgive me, Antecedent, but that fact need not contradict the elementals' testimony. Unlike his more bellicose compeers, Garuda and so on, Rame was reputed to act only in the defense of his children. Imagine he would soon make his... I imagine he would soon make his presence known if any were foolish enough to directly endanger the Sylphs or their territory. The abruptness of this development concerns me. Were we not keeping a close watch on the touched ones and their movements? If preparations for a summoning ritual were indeed underway, it would surely not have escaped your notice. Oh, it didn't. I was pretty sure it was going to happen, just not this soon. I beg your pardon? You first saw this eventuality and did not prevent it? I told Papalino, I suppose I could have reported the things been failure earlier, but there was honestly was, wasn't much we could do except wait and see. You know how the souls feel about people poking around in their territory. They only summoned Ramu once right after the calamity, but that was because the Garleans came trampling, tramping through the forest. And so long as Castrum Orion stands, the Sylphs cannot be blamed for wishing to have their guardian deity on hand. In short, Ethan and I are in agreement. The actions of the Forest Folk were inevitable and unavoidable. And I maintain the op that observation would have remained the best policy had it not been for the sudden influx of strangers into the Black Shroud. That, alas, we did not foresee. By all accounts, the recent violence in Wildal drove a number of refugees to seek safety under the concealing canopy of the trees. Tis like that the Sills perceived this panic migration as yet another invasion. Oh my god. Huh. Why am I yawning? I really don't get it. I had way more than enough sleep. Quick in their efforts to summon their god. I am put in mind that the Titan and the Kobolds once again it is the affairs of men which have paved the way for a primal's coming. Indeed, one cannot help but wonder what manner of place of yours you would be without the civiling, civilizing influence of mankind. Be that as it may, this regrettable development does afford us a unique opportunity. Arya, through your dealings with the Sylphs of Little Solace, you once succeeded in preventing an untimely conflict with Gridania. I wonder, might one who has treated with the Sylphs so fruitfully in the past not achieve similar success with their patron deity? If Rama can be convinced of our intentions, I may be the first to step to breaking the cycle or it may be the first step first step to breaking the cycle of primal summoning blah, 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 blah. a fond hope were such a thing possible we would not have been at war with beastmen since time immemorial but maybe this time we can let's continue this this discussion and on we must needs first consult with a nation most affected by rami's presence the other seat seer has requested your personal involvement, Arya. Pray report to Commander Hulo at the other's nest as soon as you are able. <sighs> Steal yourselves for the worse. While I hope for a peaceful resolution to this matter, if experience suggests that your meeting with the Lord of Eleven will prove less than amicable. In such an event, your fellow sounds will of course lend you whatever support you require. All right, off to Gridania, yay! Aria the Scions, your arrival has been most anticipated. The appearance of a primal is ever cause for alarm and unease. Though my men stand ready for any eventuality, I know of none more qualified than you to snuff out this threat. Indeed, I would have you do so without delay. The elder seats here, however, would speak with you first. She is of the opinion that your dip diplomatic rather than martial skills may better serve our cause, I will leave further explanation to our learned leader. Pray make your way to Nothica's altar. The conjurer intends will admit you to the lotus stand. Fine, fine, fine. Back to the conjurer's guild for... I don't even know what time this is. <laughs> I've, I've given up counting. Our sons have already arrived, madam. Let me show you in. Yep. Scions of the Seventh Dawn, on behalf of the people of Gridania, I bid you welcome. Your presence is of great comfort to us all in these days of uncertainty. I 
I summoned you here to share tidings of a most urgent nature. But a short while ago, the great elemental spoke, and his voice was clarion in its intensity. Ramu is returned unto the forest. Scarce had his words ceased to echo in mine ears when we were visited by an emissary from Little Solace. Our guest informs us that the Sylphs, too, have sensed the presence of the Lord of Lebin. Though his exact whereabouts remain unknown, we may safely assume that the Primal was summoned within the heart of the Sylphlands. Unlike the other Primals you have encountered, Lord Ramu is no raging avatar of destruction. He is revered as much for his wisdom as his strength, serving as both arbiter and guardian to his children. Given that we and the Sylphs found a way to share the Twelve's Wood, it is my hope that this sagely immortal will be amenable to reason, and that conflict may be avoided. Blessed as you are with the power of the Echo, you are one of the few among us who may commune with a primal without fear of influence. I would ask, therefore, that you represent us in this most delicate of negotiations. The Twelve's Wood has suffered enough. Upon this, we and the Sylphs, and I would venture Lord Ramu himself, are in perfect accord. Let us not endanger our shared home by engaging in unnecessary hostilities. Dear friend, I beseech you, safeguard the peace which exists between our peoples. You have my thanks. Pray make for little solace, then. A member of the Order of the Twin Adder awaits you there. He will advise you on how to find the Lord of Levin. An ill wind blows through the forest. Yet, it is not only the Twelve's Wood that flinches at its coming. All the lands of Eorzea shiver in dread anticipation. Have care. Oh, just answer and I'll sleep. Boot it out. Bye bye. Get out of here. Oh boy, so little solace. Means hot or not? All right, the scions. I was told to expect to. I understand you go to treat with the primal Ramu himself, an unenviable task, but one for which I have no doubt you are well suited. I've been told that your fellow scions are conducting an investigation of the area as we speak. But we might ascertain the location where the Lord of Levin might be found. I would ask that you abide here until they return with their findings. Fine. Levin in impression. Turn auto back off. I was told that a messenger would be sent as soon as your fellow scions finish their investigation. I don't imagine it will be much longer. This one returns and returns with good tidings. Wise ones have finished in search and have but wisely identified the precise lo location where the touched ones summoned Lord Ramu. Your timing is impeccable, my fluttery friend. Might you be so kind as to escort this good woman to her fellow scions? It will be this one's pleasure, walking one. Please, come. Please, come with this one. Well then. We need to come. Oh, fine, Maxio. Good thing we can fly. So great, isn't it? Yeah. 
so great. I love being able to fly. Hello. Wise ones have ventured deep, deep within the Southlands. These ones must proceed carefully and keep an eye out for touched ones. Okay. I'll do that. With flying. Back we go. And back we go. Gosh. Yeah, trying to traverse this area on land is just... Oh, this one is most sorry, but this one can go no further. Draw too close to Ramu, and this one may turn mean and nasty like touched ones. And so this one must say farewell for now. Walking one will find wise ones not far from here to the south. Go in safety, walking one. All right. Right down here is our friend. So it's actually you. I'm relieved. For a moment, I thought we were dealing with another one of those confounded self tricksters. I swear, them wreaking havoc with their skin changing magic is a wonder I was able to finish taking my measurements. Yes, it was quite the ordeal. You should have seen the look on this toll's face when the one impersonating you suddenly showed up. That's quite enough, Papalima. Ahem. <clears throat> my apologies. It's not like me to ramble so. At any rate, as I was saying, I've finished measuring etheric activity in the area, and pleased to say it, I have reached an indisputable conclusion. To wit, that Rami was called forth in the vicinity of the Sylph's Aetherite. Wow. I've never had this happen before. Come, Arya, the Lord of Love and awaits. So, the Aetherite would happen to be right down here. Just kind of flew into the mine there, I guess. I know to betrays thee, sir, hiding. Bane of Ifrit, Titan, Garuda, and Leviathan. I am Ramu, guardian of the children of the forest. Thou tramplest upon sacred soil, bringer of light. By what right doth man intrude in this sanctuary of the sylphs? Gridanians proffer peace? Their words are born of delusion, thine offer, an insult. Thou speakest of harmony, yet carest not for my children's desires. They did but wish to dwell beneath these boughs in solitude. Yet even that was too much to ask of man. Thus did they turn to me for succor. The sentence I pronounce upon thy kind is just. Redanian or Garlean, it matters not. The good intent of one excuseth not the misdeeds of the other. Thy conflict have brought naught but anguish and misery unto the forest. All blame doth lie with the darkness that resideth in the breast of man. Whence sprung this calamitous seed? In the beginning no such duality existed. Were light and dark given form when man was born? 
It would explain much. Not least why strife and sorrow follow ever in thy wake. Thou canst not deny the urgings of thine own nature. Knowing that thy mere presence here portendeth tragedy, wilt thou persist in this pretense of peacemaking? Thou bearest the crystal which I bestowed upon thy wayward charges, that they should entrust so precious a gift to thee. Thou standest apart from thy kin. Thou art the bringer of light, I. But there is something more in thee. Very well. I shall consider thy proposal, shouldst thou survive my trial. If thou wouldst champion the cause of harmony, I must have proof that thou art fit to play the role. Worthy mine ire, and prove to me thereby that thou hast strength enough to stay the darkness which threateneth to consume thee. Yet if thou shouldst be found wanting, know that all men shall perish in the storm of my judgment. Come to me, bringer of light. I shall await thee on the field of battle. Urianje, it is rare indeed to find you so far from a tome. The Lord of Levin himself. Never till this day had I looked upon his visage, save in painted renderings made faint by time. Ever shall this scene remain etched in my mind's eye. <clears throat> Beg pardon, my lady. I must beg thine aid on a point of research. If thou art resolved to face Lord Ramu, I would ask thy leave to observe the event. <sighs> of course we're not getting out of this without a fight. The striking tree art, now accessible. Wow. Just kind of fell from my mount, just poof. How is that? No, it's looking that way. That's why it's not aggroing me, I guess. Just for that, though, I am gonna aggro it. <laughs> so, on that note, I do think that next time we will go ahead and take on Ramu's trial. In other words, they had to give us a primal fight. They're working there, like, here's Ramu. Oh, no fight. Yeah, here's Ramu. Here's a fight. Just not your usual. Absolutely pissed off Primal. Just, I want to test your worth, otherwise I will destroy everything. Primal. Yeah, you know. You know how it goes. Anyway, yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode and the video and whatever you want to say, call it and blah, 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 blah. Hey, <laughs> consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. I'm kind of going off track here. If you really enjoy it, consider supporting the channel. All support girly helps you keep doing content like this and more. You can find links for that in the description along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rinium T striking out. You got striking tree. Oh, 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 I'll see myself out. <laughs>